Good morning. My name is Joslyn Ninsima Enen. Hi, I'm Randy, and this is our son Eli. Welcome to St. Paul's Sunday Morning Worship. We hope you're having a wonderful holiday weekend. Stay safe and always focus on the most important thing. May God bless you. Woo! <laughs> 
Good morning, I'm Steve Porch, pastor here at St. Paul, and I want to welcome you as well to our worship service today on this holiday weekend. You know, it's been said that only two forces have been willing to offer their lives for you, for us. One is the American soldier, willing to die so that we might have the freedoms that we have in this country, um, the freedom that allows us to come together and worship as we are today. And the other is Jesus Christ, our Savior, who offers us freedom in the utmost sense. We are grateful today for both of those defining forces in our lives and for the opportunity we have to be together on this weekend, uh, even if it is through this means of technology. Um, we are still free to worship, and we are grateful for that. Let us gratefully hear the scripture that we have for today from the letter to the Galatians chapter 5 reading verse 1 and then 13 through 23 for freedom Christ has set us free stand firm therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery for you are called to freedom brothers and sisters only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires, desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, today as we worship, we are grateful for the freedom we celebrate. The freedom we have in this country to worship, to speak, to write, to be who you've called us to be. We're grateful for those who have sacrificed for those freedoms. But especially today, Lord, we are grateful for the freedom we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. Freedom from the bondage of sin. Freedom from the evil desires that try to take our lives over. Freedom to love one another and to share your grace, your mercy, and your good news with all. So today, we give you thanks for freedom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior.
Good morning, kids. It's going to be a great day today. I hope you're having a great 4th of July weekend. I'm here today at one of my favorite places, the fireworks stand. Let's go take a look inside right quick. Well, wasn't that fun going through there? Man, there is so much stuff at a fireworks stand. We could have so much fun um, celebrating freedom, right? That guy's celebrating freedom by going real fast in his truck. Um, we're celebrating freedom this weekend, and, and I want to talk a little bit about freedom. You know, uh, we're free to come and buy fireworks as long as the rules are followed, right? Freedom doesn't mean you can just do anything because we still have rules to follow, but, but freedom means that it, it, we can come and buy fireworks and we can go uh, to the right places and shoot them and, and, and watch them and, and have some fun. Uh, but freedom doesn't mean we can just do anything we want to because there's a word that comes with freedom and that is responsibility, responsibility. Let, let me explain it to you. I'm free to go in here and buy those fireworks. And when I buy those fireworks, I'm free to go shoot them and, and, and uh, enjoy them and, and celebrate with them. But there's a few things I can't do with those fireworks. I can't go inside that tent. Well, I can and light a firework, but but that wouldn't be very smart, would it? Because it would probably light the other fireworks and they would all go off and then somebody might get hurt and this family would lose their business and lose a bunch of money. Um, and so I might be free to do that, but I have a responsibility to be safe in doing that. Um, I, I'm free to, to shoot those fireworks as long as I'm not shooting them at other people, right? Because um, I can do that, but that wouldn't be a very smart thing to do either. Because um, somebody would get hurt. And, and so, uh, in our freedom, we also have to have some responsibility. We have to think about how we use our freedom, um, not just for ourselves. Believe me, I would love to go buy all those fireworks and shoot them all just for myself and enjoy them. And, um, but but that probably wouldn't be the smartest thing for me to do ever either. Um, so uh, we have freedoms. We're free to do a whole lot of things. Um, and, in, in, and in Jesus' love, uh, we're, we're free in a lot bigger ways than just being free in our country. But, but we're told that when we have our freedoms, 
we're not supposed to just use those freedoms for us. We're supposed to think about how our freedoms affect others and how our actions affect others. So I might be free uh, to do a lot of things, but the Apostle Paul tells me if it's not building others up, if it's not sharing God's love, then it's not beneficial, even if we're free. So today, as we're celebrating the freedom of our country, uh, we're remembering um, that we are free to do a whole lot of different things, but we are not free to hurt others. We're not free to take advantage of others. We're not free to only think about ourselves. Um, we are called as followers of Jesus to use our freedom to build other people up, to share God's love with them, um, and, and to and to demonstrate how Christ's love for us frees us uh, from being being too sad or being hopeless or being fearful. That's the kind of freedom that God gives us in Jesus and the kind of freedom that we are really celebrating as the church. The freedom to share God's love with those around us. There is no law against sharing God's love. So, this week as we celebrate, uh, let's remember our freedom to share God's love with others. Will you pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us and giving us freedom in Jesus Christ. Help us use that freedom to share your love with others. Amen. All right. Be safe if you shoot fireworks this weekend, and I'll see you next week on Children's Moments with Pastor Steve. Bye-bye. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's me, Seymour A. Sites. The A stands for awesome. Don't forget it, because that's what St. Paul Vacation Bible School has been in years past. And guess what? We may not be able to have in-person Vacation Bible School this year at St. Paul, but we're going to have a virtual journey to find out where in the world is God. And so I invite you to come and join and be part of our online virtual journey starting this coming Wednesday, July the 8th. Um, if you'll check out our Facebook page or our website, you'll get all the information how to get joined up. And, and and team up with me, Seymour A. Sites, and Maggie, our gracious flight attendant, for a week uh, and a half of adventures in finding God. Oh, wait a minute. I got to go. See ya. Seymour. Get. It's not time. Get. Oh. I'm sorry about that. Seymour just thought it was time to come do an announcement, but it's not announcement time. It's time for us to enter into the Word of God with a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks for the opportunity you've given us today to be together, to celebrate your presence, to celebrate the freedom you've given us in Christ Jesus. Bless us now with your presence and with the power of your spirit that enables us to hear your voice amidst all the clutter and chaos and noise in our world. Speak through me or speak in spite of me, but speak so that we might hear. Amen. Well, I am a, a flag-waving Pledge saying, tried and true, died in the wool, red, white, and blue, American. Matter of fact, I tried to get a, a, a shirt like this that was white with the American uh, flag on it, uh, but they didn't have my size. I was going to do it just for this weekend, but, but America is important to me. And the word freedom courses through my veins, just like it does for all of us as Americans. 
Now, I don't know about you, but it doesn't really take the 4th of July for me to think about and to be grateful for, for the freedoms that we have. I, I love to hear songs that sing about freedom. I've, I've been playing some of those this week on our Facebook page. Songs like, America, my country, tis of thee. Yeah, let freedom ring. Songs like, think from Aretha, Aretha Franklin, hell freedom. I, I, that, it just gets going. But I can tell you this much, and some people don't really like this song that much, but I, I still get chills at every fireworks display I attend that plays and and anymore, most of them do. At least a portion of Lee Greenwood's I'm proud to be an American. Where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men and women who died to give that right to me. I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. There ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. That sentiment's there. And yes, we have our problems, we have our issues, but I'm still proud to live in the USA and I'm still proud to be able to honor the men and the women who have secured that right, that freedom for us. Let's take just a moment for a special time of reflection. As we celebrate our independence and our freedom this weekend, I invite you all to take just a moment of silence to remember and reflect upon and give thanks for those who were willing to sacrifice to ensure that those freedoms here and abroad can be celebrated. that freedom doesn't come cheap. It always comes at a cost and we give thanks to those who have paid the price for ours. But there are some other things that tag along with freedom, something besides the cost. Freedom, you see, always comes with a risk. With every right we have, there is also a responsibility. With every freedom we love, there is also a temptation to abuse it. You name it, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, the right to bear arms. And while I, I would not trade away a single one of those things, we could all sit here and, and share stories of how those freedoms are being abused and, and how they're being utilized detrimentally. We all know situations where someone is, is abusing one or more of those freedoms to take advantage of the, the, the people around them. Think of a young boy, talented and smart, yet afraid to speak up, afraid to even come out of his room because his father has berated him verbally so often and so maliciously that, that the boy does not even believe in his own self-worth, abusing the privilege of freedom of speech. The boy cannot even recognize that, that he is a precious child of God. I think of the, the numerous people who were shot to death in a gunman's mad rage, abusing the privilege and the freedom and the right to bear arms. I think of thousands of, of poor lost souls wrapped up in pagan and even satanic worship, all of which is protected by by our religious freedoms. And to think of the phrase so often heard in this great place that we call America that goes something along these, li these lines. Do what you want to do. It's a free country. It's a free country. 
some 1950 years ago, the, the Christian cry of freedom had a similar result. Paul's message to the Galatians was clear. For freedom, Christ has set us free. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Freedom from the demands of the law. Freedom from the cultural rituals of the Jews. Freedom from slavery and oppression. Freedom from the yoke of sin. The cost for freedom had been paid. It had been purchased with the blood of Christ on the cross of Calvary. However, there was a problem. It was a problem that is not unlike one we are facing in America today. You see, the, the understanding of freedom in the, in the philosophic Greek world focused on what is called autonomous detachment. I know, that's a, a big philosophical term, so let me help you. The Greek philosopher Epictetus defined it this way. Freedom, autonomous detachment, defined as he is free who lives as he wills, who is subject neither to compulsion nor hindrance nor force, whose choices are unhampered, whose desires attain their end, whose aversions do not fall into what they would avoid. In other words, Freedom as autonomous detachment is doing exactly what you want to do and not having to do anything you don't want to do. More specifically, it is, it's a free country. Do what you want. Sound familiar? Now, the church in Galatia was struggling with that very issue. And Paul had, had preached freedom in Christ when he was there. And now they were taking their freedoms too far. Other missionaries followed Paul and began preaching strict adherence to the Jewish laws, and including circumcision and the, and the dietary food laws. And, and, and the Galatians were confused and beginning to run amok. Paul heard stories of this church struggling between a philosophy of strict legalism, of, of which Paul believed Christ had come to cure us, and this philosophy of autonomous detachment that was resulting in the breakdown of the moral fiber and the cohesiveness of the community of faith in Galatia. And neither was good according to the gospel. The gospel in which Paul believed, to which he had devoted his life, and, and, and to which he spent preaching. Friends, I see a country here in 2020 that, that looks somewhat like Galatia. On one hand, we have some people trying to legislate every aspect of morality, trying to make laws that regulate every personal choice that is ours to make, and trying to make sure that we somehow don't go further off the moral deep end. On the other hand, we have a, a faction of people who would have us believe that anything and everything is protected under the auspices of civil rights and freedom. And then stuck in between these two factions, there's a whole bunch of confused and often misinformed people who are just caught in this rat race of, of autonomous detachment using and abusing the freedoms for which so many have fought and died solely for their own personal pleasure and gain. We have turned our patriotic liberties so often into to self-centered and self-serving and self-pleasing freedoms. Things that in the end bring us just as little fulfillment or, or satisfaction or joy or peace as trying to follow every little detail of every little rule in order to please some overbearing vengeful authority. Neither one of those work. So where do we turn for guidance? Where do we turn for moral direction? Where do we turn for hope? How do we deal with this freedom that we are given. Paul instructs the 
the church at Galatia to turn to the Holy Spirit. For he says, it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we are able to live the Christ-centered, the Christ-like lives that we are given the freedom to live through him. It's only when we mirror the image of Christ in our lives that we will find the, the true joy of freedom and the strength to overcome the power of the flesh, that, that power that pulls us helplessly toward either extreme legalism or autonomous detachment. It's only when we use our freedom to become slaves to one another through love instead of as opportunities for self-indulgence that, that we can truly experience the fullest measure of the Christian life. It is interesting that in the, the very strictest translation of, of the Greek, verse 13 can be rendered to say, do not allow freedom to become a base of operations for the hostile power of the flesh. Do not allow freedom to become a base of operations for the hostile power of the flesh. Yes, freedom comes with a risk but only if we use it and abuse it for our own selfish motives. Or if we fear it so much that we fall back into being slaves to some moralistic and legalistic code that we believe will save us. Now, the alternative to either of these demises associated with freedom is to live our lives becoming slaves to one another in love becoming servants to one another in love. For if we are worried about the, the, the law, Paul reiterates the, the scripture in Deuteronomy and the words of Christ when he writes, for the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. See, through Christ, we have the freedom to love one another. We have the freedom to overcome the power of the flesh. We have the freedom to let the Spirit lead and guide and direct us as we try to live our lives as servants to others. The same way that Christ lived. The same way that Christ died. As a servant. And, and therein lies the true joy of freedom. It's in being a servant and not being served. It's freedom to choose to love and to serve others instead of freedom that, that finds itself based in self-indulgence. And just in case we have a problem realizing what that kind of freedom looks like, just in case we think we need to slip back into legislating every aspect of morality, Paul provides us as the, the church with both a vice list, the way living in the flesh looks, and a virtue list, the way living in the spirit looks. He says, if our freedoms become a base of power, a base of operation for the flesh, and a tool of autonomous detachment where we just serve ourselves, then our community of faith will become filled with, here comes the list, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. That's, that's quite a list, isn't it? I mean, he might not have touched on every topic, but he hit most of them. And then he says, if, however, our freedom becomes a platform of servanthood, which is conducted in love, then we will experience what he calls the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Isn't that a better sounding list? If our freedom is used for servanthood instead of self-indulgence, if it's, if it's taken in love and used to share love instead of just taking care of our own, then we experience the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And Paul says, guess what? There is no law against these things. Nor do we need a law to mandate them. We are free. We are free to do them as the Spirit leads us through the love and the life and the blood of Christ. That's true freedom. So folks, this weekend as we celebrate the, the freedom that this country provides, we should remember as a community of faith, as the church of Jesus Christ, as the embodiment of the living God, that there is a greater call for freedom. The freedom given through Christ. For freedom, Christ has set us free. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. And then the saying will be true, and the truth shall set us free, and we will be free at last. Free at last. Free at last. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we celebrate the freedoms that we have, the liberties that we have in this country, may we turn our hearts and minds toward the freedom and the liberty you give us through Christ. And may they walk hand in hand as we serve each other as we serve our brothers and sisters, as we serve even those who are most difficult to serve. For you have called us to love not only one another, but to love even our enemies. And there is no law against that. There is freedom for love in your Son, Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
set free by the blood of Christ, by the love of God. You are a child of God who has been set free by the Son, and who the Son sets free is free indeed. So let us go forth, free people, free to love and to serve in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior. Thank you for joining us this week at St. Paul United Methodist Church in Fort Smith, Arkansas. May God bless you as you love and serve your neighbor. Amen.